This video is about a long bank holiday weekend in Austria and Germany from a railway enthusiast point of view. We'll start by showing you how we got to Vienna and what we did there. And at the end of this first section, you'll get to see our journey to Hamburg on one of the new night jet sleeper trains. Our journey started with an early morning taxi ride across the Pennines from Leeds to Manchester Airport. We walked around Terminal 2 of the airport, had our breakfast, looked at the shops and boarded a Jet 2 flight to Vienna. If you're enjoying this video so far, Please leave a like or a comment to help more people find it. The flight was nice and took just over two hours. Once we landed, I was expecting to get the city airport train into the centre of Vienna. But when we were buying tickets, we realised that this doesn't stop at the Hauptbahnhof station, which is the one that was closest to our hotel. Instead, we got on one of the railjet trains, which turned out to be even better. If you like trains as I do, it's an interesting journey from the airport. It takes around 20 minutes and almost all the way along you'll see different trains like this through the window. We got our first glimpse of a night jet train, just like the one that we'd be catching the day after.
After spending some time at the station watching and recording the trains, we headed out of there and went to drop our bags off at the hotel. We stayed at a nice hotel called Moons, just outside the station, and we would later find out just how good the view was if you wanted to see the trains. There's already hundreds of videos on YouTube showing you things to do in Vienna, so we're not going to go into any detail, but we walked up from our hotel up to the main shopping area and we saw loads of things along the way and it was a really pleasant walk despite the rainy weather. There was a big fountain at the end of the park and this seems to be somewhere where you can get off the tram if you're wanting to avoid walking as much. Once we got to the main shopping area, we decided to stop and have something to eat. We ended up going to a spa, which had a fresh food section that had a good range of sandwiches, pastries, fruit and pizza. We headed back towards the hotel through another garden. When we got back to the hotel to check in, we found out that they had upgraded our room to one on the top floor. This gave us a perfect view of the railway station. The continental breakfast in the hotel was nice, if not a little strange, and included things such as cauliflower, and something that looked like Sweden carrot mash. On the second day we caught a tram this time up to the main area of Vienna. We used the number one tram which seems to go past all the main tourist areas and we got to see loads of different things just from the tram without even having to get off. In the centre of Vienna, there's loads of historic buildings and some really nice gardens. You can go in most of the buildings, but we didn't because we didn't have long there, so we just wanted to make sure that we saw as much as possible. The weather on the second day was much better than the first. After a nice ice cream and a walk around the shops, we got back onto the tram and headed back towards our hotel. Our day and a half in Vienna was nearly over. Before we went to catch a sleeper train, I'd seen this bridge on Google Maps which I wanted to go and have a look at. It's about a 15 minute walk away from the railway station, just past the old Arsenal building. It's a good place to see the trains coming in and out, although I wanted to take some photos and it wasn't particularly easy because of all the wires. You probably get a better view just staying at the railway station. Before we got on the train, 
We did try the Obebe lounge, but we didn't really like it. The staff in there didn't seem particularly friendly, so we had a quick drink and then we left to go and sit on the station. This is great for people who like railways because so many different trains from different countries pass through here. The sleeper train cabin is small but really well laid out and as the trains are so new everything's really clean and fresh. In the bathroom there's a toilet, a sink and the shower head can be hooked up just above the sink so that you can stand up and have a shower. The locomotive was a Siemens Taurus. This took us all the way to Hamburg. After about half an hour on the train, we were handed a bag which contained a few items including slippers, a bottle of water, a face cloth, a night jet pen, an eye mask, a strange seed mix, some earplugs and then some sweets The lights and heating are controlled from this panel and one of the nice features of this train is that you can change the colour of the lights The temperature ranges from warm to nice cool air conditioning. When we stopped in Germany, the German police got on the train. We expected them to check our passports and we were told to have them ready, but in the end they never spoke to us. It was getting late at this point, so we decided to go to sleep so that we weren't too tired for the next day. We woke up quite early and got some really nice views of the German countryside. We stopped at one of the stations for quite a long time, so I got off to film some of the trains that were passing us.
Somewhere near Hanover, the sun came out and we were brought our breakfast. We had coffee and orange juice, bread and jam and a yoghurt each. We passed a lot more trains on the way. The German railway network seems a lot bigger than the UK's. The journey was coming to an end. We both really enjoyed it because you get to see a lot more of the countries than you would if you were just flying over them in a plane. As we approached Hamburg station, we left our cabin ready to get off the train. Thanks for watching this first part of our video. In the next part, we'll show you Miniature Wonderland, Hamburg, and our flight back to the UK via Amsterdam Airport.